This is the moment cops realized there was a head in the bucket at the crime scene. But little did they know, the entire case would only get more and more horrifying. On the 23rd of February, 2023, police visited the apartment of a suspected killer, Taylor Shabiznes. This is where they would quickly find out that she's not only insane, but a complete psychopath. Nothing. Hey, is this blood? Does this one have blood to you? How am I just tripping? Could possibly be blood. Hey, who did that? Hi. Hi, Taylor. How's it going? Officer Russell with the Green Bay Police Department. Taylor, you have one more for your arrest. Put your hands together back with You got blood on your hands here, blood on The cops were searching Taylor's property on a warrant and discovered bloody footprints next to her car and blood literally on her hands. But upon searching her apartment, they found the very thing they had been called to find in the first place, a human head in a bucket, first discovered by the victim's own mother. The police wasted no time in getting her into custody, where one of the most chilling interrogations of all time would begin. I hate this fucking outfit. Well, a few hours ago, police were dispatched to uh, address on Stony Brook that the painter sells Shad Therian. Mm -hmm. Do you know Shad? And how do you know Shad? He's my ex. He's your ex boyfriend? Yeah. Well, they found a kind of a disturbing stuff at the house there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of blood, basically Shad's head. It's immediately obvious how stone-faced and cold Taylor is being. She's showing absolutely no emotion about anything, including the goriest details of the case, only managing to mutter, that's fucked up, in regards to the severed head. Often, psychopaths like to talk up their own crimes as it gives them a sense of self-gratification, but we haven't even begun to see exactly how insane she is. Where's the rest of this body? It's there. It's at the house. It is in the house? It's at the house. Okay. Can you tell me what happened? It's a good question, because I blacked out during that time. Were, um, you two being intimate had sex? It was getting there. It was getting there. Okay. So will this be considered foreplay? Yeah. Yeah. You guys done something like this in the past? Not like that. Do you use manual strangulation during sex at all? Um, um, manual strangulation, yes, 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 yes. Taylor claims that she and Shad were being intimate that night and she'd used a dog chain to choke him. But apparently this wasn't unusual for them. But that evening, she just didn't stop until he was almost dead. She also mentions that she'd been smoking meth that night, something that definitely could have contributed to the horrifying events that followed. Where's your body? The body's there. So, are we going to take the head somewhere? I like that. You liked it? So, you dismembered the body too? Yeah. Well, what did you do with the body part? They're in the house. Someone? They're like, um, yeah. yeah. Basement, upstairs, downstairs? Absolutely in the basement. I'll be going to bring them. And then, um, I know I forgot the head. I wanted the head. Did you bring anything with you? Yeah, it's in the van. What? It's in the van. It turns out that Taylor had not only choked out and beheaded Shad, but also dismembered multiple parts of his body and hidden them throughout the apartment. Just this thought alone is grim, but exactly how is another story entirely. How did you just know where his body then? Nice. With what? Nice, 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 nice. Nice? Just more than one knife? Not more. Where did you get those from? Kitchen. They weren't sharp? No, no. It was all right. Bread knife works good. Bread knife? A bread knife works good. Really? I had to use one of these, so like, yeah. I got lazy last night, so. 
Once Shad was dead, Taylor sawed off his limbs with a blunt bread knife and tossed each individual piece of his body into a black bag the police later found in the basement. But somehow, the most shocking part of all of this is how casually she's talking about it. It's almost as if she doesn't see anything wrong with what she's done. Psychopathic murderers often take pride in their work and enjoy the attention that it brings them. Ted Bundy, for example, was constantly delighted to speak to the press for likely the same reason Taylor is laughing about what she did. Narcissism. Taylor is saying that this was an accident, but the joy she's getting out of explaining every tiny detail to the detective implies that while she maybe didn't plan it, she certainly had no issues with what she did. For the next five minutes, Taylor describes how she cuddled with his body after killing him and how she used parts of his dismembered body specifically his genitals. We pick the interview back up as she continues to bluntly describe the chilling events of that night. You do anything particular with the head or the body? What would you do with the blood that we're having all the time? It's, it's still on the air, still on the top. There's a shower in the basement. You go in the next side over and I just dump it out of the rain. and just probably so good. What are you doing? Well, I drained his head. Well, like, after I saw his blood, I put it on the bucket, but then there's still blood in this bucket because it's coming out of the head. Should have took the brains and all, but I didn't do that. And then I just... So you cleaned his head in the shower and then dumped the bucket? Yeah. Not only is Taylor comfortable with dismembering and beheading her former lover, but it seems she was also fine with draining and washing his head, and possibly even removing his brain. It's unclear why she felt the need to do this right now, as things really aren't adding up. She had already discarded and hidden the rest of the body, so if she was attempting to hide it, then she would want to dispose of the head too. There is something much deeper at play here, and the detective is desperate to figure out what. So when he, when he put the chain on his neck, he thought that you guys were going to have kinky sex. You think that's what Chad was thinking, maybe? Yeah. What were you thinking? I was going to do the same thing. You know, I was going in, and I did. And I went in. But then he was like, choke me. But he didn't really say it, so I'm like, he put it on his neck. I already know I'm going to choke him. And I did. But before you... Chain went around his neck. Were you and Chad like kissing or any foreplay or anything? No, we were chilling at home. You just chilling. So all of a sudden, the, the chain went around his neck. Yeah. How oh, come? I'm just trying to, to get it. He likes it. All right. And so I was gonna walk him like a dog. You know, and he wanted that. I have no idea what I was gonna do it anyway. <laughs> okay. And you claim it was his idea. No, it's his idea. It was all him. All right, so yeah. you're on the bed, the chain goes around his neck and you start choking him. And you just realized that he was going to die or what? I'm just like, shit. I think I went a little too far because, like, like I, I was blacking out while I was doing it, right? And then I thought, and then, like, I look at him, I'm like, shit, he's already purple. I'm like, fuck, I'm, not, I'm like, I don't know if he's fucking. Is he good? Is he good? But then, like, when I woke up, like, you know, I'll, like, during the black, I'm like, shit. I didn't mean for all this to happen, and I'm like, I fucked up. I know I fucked up. I'm like, shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what happened. This is the closest Taylor has come to remorse in the entire interrogation, but it's so heavily undermined by everything else she said, it's impossible to believe she's being genuine. It's likely that she's only saying this because she knows that showing some remorse could help her defense and get her a lighter sentence. In fact, throughout the entire interrogation, it seems as though she's been attempting to do this very thing. Taylor's story is that she got home with Shad and almost immediately grabs the chain and started choking him. Then she suddenly blacked out, saw him dead in front of her, and despite not wanting him to be dead, didn't call an ambulance and instead dismembered him, played with his body, and then laughed about it with police. These don't sound like the actions of an innocent person, and the detectives don't think so either. 
The case was brought to trial almost immediately, where Taylor would continue to show just how insane she really is. Take a look at her demeanor as Shad's best friend testified in front of court. When I got there, I was, we were just chilling, chopping it up, like how we always do. And uh, basically, um, I was like, Taylor was thinking, asking like, do you wanna, do you wanna hang out with Shad? She was asking me, like, for consent to hang out with Shad, to, like to bring him over. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. This behavior continued for the entire trial so far, as she smiled, smirked, and laughed her way through the whole thing. But it seems that this didn't give the jury a great impression of her, as she found out when the verdict was cast. Okay. <clears throat> First verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Taylor Denise Shabusiness, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this date, July 26th, 2023, signed by the four-person. Taylor Shabiznis was convicted of first-degree murder, mutilating a corpse, and sexual assault. As of this video's upload, she's awaiting her sentence, but is facing life in prison, or even the death sentence. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more.